Sorry, I'm slipping through the trees here, trying to find some deer, and unfortunately I just found one. Could smell it. There's the little bit of the spine that I saw first, and then the jawbone. One little hoof right there, and a leg. Shoulder blade. Look at that. Dang it. Something chewed him all to pieces. Would have been a decent four. Must have been enough blood left in them antlers for... It looked like a bear killed it because there's bear scat up there. <sighs> Dang, that's sickening. He would have been a good buck. Look at that, man. It's just a shame. Wonder if that's some a buck somebody hit. <sighs> and just never found and the bear found it and ate it. So here's what I'm working on today. Got these two right here. I'm making uh, replacements for. This one's got damaged handle. This one's just been worn down over the years, so I'm making a replacement. They're in the oven right now. They're going to get a flash quench and then a quench. In the meanwhile, I'm grinding on some blades here, working on these. treated so when I grind them I have to be real careful they don't get overheated and lose the temper uh, but I can get a lot straighter blade when I grind them post heat treat so that's why I do it. it's a lot harder it takes a lot longer to grind but with these 36 grit belts it's not too bad and you know, I'll kind of walk this one through I won't do the whole thing but I'll kind of show you the steps of the process stuff so it takes a while to grind mainly right now I'm just making sure that my plunge lines are even my thickness is even from both sides because I'm doing a full flat grind on these ones it doesn't really matter what my grind lines look like till I hit the top up here because it's gonna be full flat all the way up so I can worry less about that if it was a saber grind or a partial grind then I would have to be more careful about making sure that those were even on both sides but uh, I like a full flat flat grind for several reasons, but anyway, you'll notice that I'm dipping this in the water after every pass, and I'm also switching out between between uh, different knives so they can cool because 
Um, I don't want them to get too hot. That's why I'm grinding with bare hands because if they get hot enough to burn me, then they're, you know, they'll burn me at about two or 300 degrees, but they're tempered at 425. So as long as I keep them under 425, I'm not going to affect my final temper uh, that I've put on this. <laughs> to do a saber grind or a partial grind you see I'd be a lot more careful about my grind lines being even all the way up because that has to if you ever mess that up it's it's messed up you can't ever recover from it so it takes a little bit more time but you can get that cleaned up and bring it up but I don't particularly like a saber grind for a skinning knife like this would primarily be used for this is a mini muck this one is available by the way um, one, one of these three will be, it's not an order, the, I have an order for two of them, the other ones I just made for an extra one, in case somebody wanted one. Um, but, you see, you'd have to be a lot more careful. Over here, I'm not being that worried, that worried about my grind line, because it's going to end right here at the spine anyway. I'm just worried about my plunge lines. Plunge lines being equal and clean. And the rest of this right here, it doesn't matter, so in the end it's going to look just right. This is what I call a mini muck. It's kind of a smaller version of a nest muck. That's, to me, it's about the perfect size for a hunting knife. Uh, perfect for gutting and skinning. I would probably use a slightly different knife for caping and stuff like that, but this is a very versatile hunting blade and honestly if you need more blade than that to to process an animal you probably doing something wrong in fact that right there is plenty but that's about what i like blade size so right now what i'm doing is this little area right here is called the ricasso and this is the only time when I can polish that. This Everything up here is going to be a grind going this way. And everything back here is going to be covered by the handle. But this little small area right here, the only time you can polish that without messing everything else up is before you finish the grind. So the work that I do now, after that I have to protect this area here. But to get this little area looking clean, because I want my grind marks going this way. In this area, even though it'll be a satin finish, there'll be a difference between the grind going this way and my grind going this way on the on the blade itself. So that's what I'm doing. I'll polish the Ricasso, then I'll finish up the grind. All right, what I'm about to do is uh, pre-quench. Um, I'm gonna, right now I'm at 1725, they've been there 20 minutes. So this is just preparing the steel for the final quench. Uh, you're gonna see me, I'll open this door because AEBL is an air quenching steel and the thicknesses that I'm using it, it's gonna be. It's gonna be air quenched, plate, it's gonna be plate quenched with, a, with an air assist which I've tested it and this, this is a really good way of quenching it, um, gets it fully hardened. And here we go, I've got two blades to do.
this quench right here isn't near as critical as the final quench. This one, like I said, is just a preparatory quench. This is at 1725. This one, this blade's big enough that I'm not going to worry about trying to I'm not going to worry about trying to quench the handle. The handle will get fully hardened too, but it's going to cool fast enough. This, you know, the the high carbon steels I work with, like 1095 and W2 and 1084. 5160 and some of the other ones like 1095 it's got about seven tenths of a second I've got to get it from the quenching temperature down to below a certain temperature in about seven tenths of a second these uh, air hardening steels are a lot more forgiving than that you can get full hardness some of them in fact if I take this out of the quenching oven and just set it here on the countertop it's going to get hard enough that I won't be able to cut it with a drill or anything like that because it uh, gets most of its hardness even if you even if it cools over a couple of minutes but uh, I found this to work pretty good so that's the initial quench and I'll put it back in the oven at a much higher temperature for the final quench Alright, the first one is done with the initial grind. It's a full flat all the way to the top. The grind is now done. It'll just be some polishing, grinding. The edge is where I want it. Um, the finished contour and that stuff will be done when I put on a lower grit belt or a higher grit belt, a finer grit, so that as I clean up this grind, then uh, I'll clean up the edges and it'll all be to about this type of a satin finish, which is a good working finish. Uh, only all my grind marks going this way on the handle and in the ricasso and all my grind marks going this way on the blade. Just makes a nice looking knife. But there's the first one done on the uh, full flat grind. I'm working on this one now. Oh, sorry. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what it would look like if I tried to do a saber grind on it. It's extremely difficult to do freehand. Um, I can't do it every time. If I, I have to go real slow. The problem with this is if you mess up one time, if you if I wanted this grind to end right there and be done, if I mess that up one time and get high or low any place, well, low I can fix, but high, it's done. You can't fix it, um, short of grinding the blade thickness thinner. But uh, that right there is is a grind that's very difficult to do. Uh, anybody that likes to make knives, you'll know what I'm talking about try to do a, a partial grind and have it clean on both sides same thickness same plunge lines and uh, sometimes when I get that far I'm almost tempted to leave it but there's a reason why I like the full flat grind short of a hollow grind which has its advantages and disadvantages a flat a flat grind is just a really good blade geometry for for cutting and skinning and slicing and that's why that's why I like it but anyway this one's coming along all right, here's these two fresh out of the heat treat. I've taken them out of the uh, uh, foil packets that protect them. These things have to be at uh, such high temperatures for such long periods of time that if you didn't cover them and protect them in some way, uh, you'd end up baking. It just, you'd just ruin the metal, basically. So 
you get a little bit of oxygen that's left in those packets, which creates these little bit of patterns here, which is kind of cool. But this one's going to be a chisel grind. I went ahead and started that prior to heat treat. And this one right here, that's going to be a tricky grind to do on that, uh, on that curved shape. So I started it as well. Took them down to about, you know, about 20 thousandths. And now I'll clean them up, finish the grinds, and uh, start working on the handles. These are leather working tools. All right, well that takes you through the rough grinding and blade tempering heating. These are now ready for handles. I went ahead and left this one just a little bit different grind, a little bit shy of the top, just because I could, and I like it. Anyway, one of these three is still available if anybody wants to buy one. Let me know what you think.